A very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part 11, making a new gland nut for the valve rod. If you watched the last episode in this series, you will see my attempts at repairing the old gland nut, which was unsuccessful. So I'm going to make a complete new one using some phosphor bronze hexagon, and here it is in the chuck. The first thing to do is to remove this bit on the end. This is from a previous job, I can't remember what it was. As you can clearly see from this clip, phosphor bronze cuts entirely differently to brass. And also, phosphor bronze makes an excellent bearing material, whereas brass does not. If you look at the image from the original gland nut at the beginning of this episode, you will see that the hole isn't in the centre, but it will have been originally, it's just worn unevenly. I've stopped the lathe because I need to find out exactly how much of the hexagon I need to turn down to 3 sixteenths of an inch so I can thread it. It's nearly there, but I need to take off a little bit more. I'm using the original gland nut as a gauge. This phosphor bronze is not leaded phosphor bronze, it's the old fashioned red stuff. And although it machines okay, it can be fairly horrible when you come to drill holes in it because it gets very hot. And often when drilling holes in this type of phosphor bronze, you can see it change colour with the heat. Then it grabs the drill, then the drill snaps off. Lathe coolant or at least oil is recommended, but I'm not bothering with this part because it's very small and I don't have to drill very far down it. I use a centre drill first, and now I'm using a 3 seconds of an inch drill to enlarge the hole and drill it all the way through. And the good news is that this 3 seconds of an inch drill drills fractionally undersized, so I'm going to put a reamer through there once I've drilled the hole all the way. The clicking that you can hear is when I disengage the tailstop locking lever. And in no time at all, one more click I think. Yes, that's it, the hole is drilled. The centre part is turned down to 3 sixteenths of an inch, and it's time to thread this using a 3 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch die in my homemade tailstock die holder. I'm going to use some lubricating oil. If you watch the way the chips come off the phosphor bronze, you will see how different it is to brass. You can see that this is not brass by the way the chippings are coming off it. The more continuous, whereas brass chippings are very small, very sharp and fall off immediately. This is more noticeable when you're turning phosphor bronze, but you can still see the chips are very different from the die. I think it's time for a bit more oil, then I will complete the job. And that's the job done. All I have to do now is rotate the die stock to remove it from the work. And you will notice that it is not fastened to my die stock extension, it's just a push fit on the end of it. This is more than sufficient to guide the die and keep it parallel to the lathe bed. The next part of the job is to pull the work out of the chuck a little bit so I can part it off. You will notice because I've moved the piece of hexagon in the chuck, I haven't rotated it, I've just pulled it out slightly, it's not quite as true. But it doesn't really matter, once I've parted off this component I'll be turning it round to machine the other end. And here's a quick tip, when parting off small components, use a twist drill smaller than the size of the hole to support the component when the parting tool goes all the way through. That way it will not fall into the chip tray and be lost forever. And here, as I've just mentioned, is the part reversed in the chuck, and I'm facing across the front of the gland nut. And you will notice as I pull the lathe tool back, at the end I just turn it slightly to the left, which rounds the edge. Now, because of the turning operation, one end of the hole has a burr over it, so I'm using the reamer to clear this. In this clip, I'm doing a test fit of the valve rod into the new gland nut, and it's very tight, in fact, it doesn't fit. So I'll just check that the valve rod is actually 3 seconds of an inch. And for this job, rather than using a digital caliper, I'm using my very old more and right micrometer. And I'm comparing the size of the shaft to the shaft of the reamer, which one presumes is exactly 3 seconds of an inch. So why doesn't the valve spindle fit? Well, the solution is surprisingly simple. This is a piece of stainless steel, and when I threaded it, the threaded part got slightly distorted and the die raised a burr on it. A quick touch on the polishing spindle with a bit of abrasive compound took care of that and now it fits perfectly. You will notice that the shape of the gland nut is slightly different to the main gland nut on the piston rod. I've left the nut part a bit longer and this is intentional as it gives a little bit more support for the valve rod along its length. So I think this part of the job is now satisfactory, but no sooner do I fit it than I remove it because I need to give the cylinder another coat of paint. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.